and the symbiotes of Clintar might be some of the most well known at Marvel Comics, but that doesn't mean that they are the only ones out there, or even that all symbiotes are as powerful as the most popular ones. Let's find out more about some of the weakest and get counting. Number 10, Port Grind. Port Grind apparently has the same powers as Eddie Brock, anti hero, and Venom of the 616 reality, but he also is a wild boar. And not even the wild kind of wild boar, more like a wild boar from a cartoon animated universe, where reality is warped somewhat due to everyone living like a tomb. Think Toontown from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. This is the home universe of alternate Spider Man Spider Ham, who is a pig. You may remember Spider Ham from the animated film Into the Spider Verse, but there are all sort of tomb like animal folk as well, including this boar version of Venom. Number 9, Hybrid. While any of the four symbiotes that make up Hybrid are considered pretty tame, the four of them together is it's a little less tame. The cool thing about Hybrid is it combines the abilities and power sets of four of the Life Foundation symbiotes Agony, Riot, Phage, and Lasher. However, there is also an element of weakness in their union. These symbiotes prefer being together because they are kind of like a little family unit and know that it makes them stronger ultimately. So break Hybrid up, separate its components, and not only will these symbiotes be weaker overall, but they also probably will be emotionally not great either because they don't really like when you split them up. They don't like forced breakups. This kind of gives hybrid an extra weakness in comparison to the standard sound and fire ones. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more symbiote lists, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Maniac. Mania, or Maniac as they were later known, is a symbiote that split off from Venom due to some crazy going on, which we'll actually dive into more later on this list. Mania, as it was known then, bonded to Andy Benton, a friend of Flash Thompson's who also happened to be a student at the time. This is back when Flash was a substitute gym teacher. Flash thought he was just sending a part of his own symbiote to Andy, but it was revealed that this part of Venom was its own thing, and it became known as Mania. Mania was pretty powerful while bonded with Andy, but as a symbiote on its own, it possessed just your average standard set of powers, making it not really very strong in comparison to some of the most powerful ones out there. Maniac was the name the symbiote became known by when it left left Andy and was taken by the criminal Lee Price. Later on, Maniac would be killed in the absolute carnage event and absorbed. Number 7, Agony. Agony is one of the four Life Foundation symbiotes, which were forcefully harvested from the Venom symbiote while it was their prisoner. Poor Venom and Eddie. And poor baby symbiotes. Poor symbiotes. The Life Foundation acknowledged that Agony was still too young to control a host, and so bonded it initially to a security officer with the Life Foundation. I assume to kind of help combat Agony's lack of experience. What is unique about Agony? While not as powerful as their parent Venom, they were given enhanced muscles by the government, making them one of the physically strongest of the five symbiotes that were harvested, and they can spit acid as well as absorb other chemicals to later use themselves. So it's not nothing, but it's nothing as crazy as what some symbiotes are capable of. Number 6, Payback Variant. This symbiote wasn't a symbiote in the same way as the ones from Clintar are. It instead was a being of pure electromagnetic energy that bonded with shield agent Mavis Trent. We don't know much about this new alien symbiotic species, but we do know that it bonding with Trent resulted in her getting superpowers and a cool new silver form that she could access whenever she was in a state of bliss or extreme joy or happiness. Well, this is a really cool idea for a character, symbiote, and design. The fact remains that the Payback symbiote was not as powerful as the one that we usually see from Clintar. It did however come with some superhuman boosts to strength, speed, durability, and a healing factor. It also allowed Trent the power to fly and some cool electromagnetic and telepathic powers. Still, no shape shifting and probably not as strong as someone like Venom or Carnage. Number 5, Riot. Physically, Riot is probably one of the most strongest Life Foundation symbiotes. It appears to be the largest in size when it comes to natural muscle mass, and its unique ability, which admittedly isn't super unique, is it can create blunt weapons. Or rather, it's not a really unique ability, but more a distinct preference of the symbiote. I mean, all symbiotes can create blunt weapons, but Riot prefers to create blunt weapons, possibly because they possess so much strength, which would bolster their force when it comes to their hits. Like all other Clintar symbiotes, Riot is also weak to Sonic and heat attacks, and being part of the hybrid group prefers to be bonded with the other life symbiotes, or at least near them whenever it can be. Number 4, Venom Clone. This is where Mania came from originally. That whole weird thing I said that I would dive into earlier, here we go. The Venom Clone, as it was originally known, was created from a piece of the Venom symbiote's tongue that came into the possession of the Ararat Corporation. The goal for the clone initially was to use it to destroy all life on Earth. A pretty big goal for just a little piece of Venom's tongue. The clone, however, did somewhat live up to 
to its potential in the sense that, well, it didn't kill all life on Earth, it did kill some people and it did escape. In the end, however, the clone was defeated when it fought against the OG Venom and ultimately was absorbed back into it. Or so we thought. Later on, we'd get Mania from this, who technically is part of the clone, but the Venom clone had its own whole story before that happened, so I kind of thought it would be fair to count it as a separate symbiote, as Mania was still kind of its own thing. And Mania was very different than the Venom clone, in terms of personality anyways. Number 3, Lasher. I feel pretty bad for putting Lasher up high on this list, because I actually like Lasher. But you know, Lasher was once bonded with a dog. Granted, dogs are really cool, so no hate towards dogs, but I just mean when that is where you are in comparison to other giant symbiotes like Venom and Carnage, it makes you seem a little smaller than the rest. Although admittedly, I would love to read a comic that was about Lasher's adventures as a doggo symbiote. More dog comics, please. Lasher's unique ability as a member of the Life Foundation symbiote crew was remote symbiosis, which also admittedly is not the most powerful of skills, though it is quite unique, I think, so it's got that going for it. Also, fun fact, Lasher got its name from this unique power, which we learned about through it being bonded to its dog host. Get it? Lasher. Like a leash. Lasher. You know? Number 2, Poisons. While the Poisons aren't actually symbiotes in the sense of alien beings from Clintar, they are symbiotic aliens, and I think are admittedly an overall weaker race in comparison to the symbiotes from Clintar. To me, the Poisons feel like wannabe symbiotes. And I know that they are just different, but they are also so similar as well. It just makes me feel like the Poisons were trying to be what Clintar symbiotes were, but then they got wiped out because they weren't as powerful. Their weakness ended up being their Hive Queen. Once she was destroyed, the whole thing fell apart. I guess that's kind of what the King in Black is for the symbiotes of Clintar, except that he was also asleep for forever and they mostly got on fine. And also he can be replaced as we've seen Eddie Brock become the new King in Black following Null's defeat. Also Carnage is I think now trying to steal that role? Everyone wants to be the King in Black. Number 1, Crowbaugh. Crowbaugh has a really tragic story and was a symbiotic alien that appeared in Venom Seed of Darkness issue number 1. Crowbaugh was a space explorer and sought to learn more about other civilizations and alien races as his alien race most valued diversity of mind and of thought. He was corrupted by humanity's darker side and the inner demon of the id which he came across while bonded to his host, scientist Nigel Don Levy. Eddie Brock ended up defeating Krobo with a camera flash as a being described as living darkness, light it turned out was, you know, one of its weaknesses. However, it was really the dark side of humanity that did Crobot in. Eddie's camera flash snapped it out of the violent rage that he was in, which it turns out had been brought upon by his bond to Don Levy and learning more about humanity. Krobo was so upset at being corrupted by the darkness of humanity, in order to prevent it from being spread throughout the rest of the cosmos, he decided to take his own life pretty weak in terms of his more fragile psyche and weakness to light on a planet like Earth that also has a very bright sun and very bright artificial lights, but pretty strong in terms of how depressing his story is <laughs> and how it like reflects on humanity and all of the terrible things about us. Strong story, weak symbiote. Who are some of your favorite symbiotes? Which symbiotes do you think are the weakest? Do you prefer Clintar symbiotes or is there another symbiotic alien race that you actually like better? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay nerdy YouTube.